Welcome to the Life Jesus Modeled. Our topic today is the baptism of Jesus. It has been my joy to follow in the steps of Jesus past Jericho down to the edge of the Jordan River. As Jesus approached the Jordan River, John released a message that God had been preparing him all of his life to deliver. As John saw Jesus approaching the river, he cleared his throat and said with a loud voice, John chapter 1 and verse 29, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What a stunning message. Many people had come to the river because they were weighed down by the burden of their sins. They were hoping that the water would cleanse not just their body, but their hearts. To them, John announced, it is not the water that forgives, it's the Lamb of God who has the power to forgive. I've traveled to the great rivers of the world where people go daily to seek forgiveness of their sins. Every day people leave these rivers feeling as unclean on the inside as they did when they stepped into the water. They leave promising God that this week they'll do better, but the water has no power to change the hearts of people. Only God has the power to change a heart that's filled with sin. The day that Jesus stepped into the Jordan, new hope was offered to all. Jesus came to the Jordan River to offer people hope that their lives can be changed and their sins can be forgiven. He came to the Jordan to be filled with the power of the Spirit of God. Jesus modeled for us how to be forgiven and how to live with the power of God's Spirit resting upon our life. Like John the Baptist, we are invited to minister in the spirit of Elijah and prepare the way for people to recognize that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Have you ever felt like God has been preparing you to release a message that will help people understand the nature of God and live by the power of the Holy Spirit? At one time, I was invited by a professor of Quranic interpretation to lecture his Ph.D. candidates on the subject, How Do Christians Worship and Pray? At a certain moment in the lecture, I felt the Spirit of God come upon me to say to all who were listening, This is the heart of Christian worship. We worship Jesus for the holy life he lived, the power he demonstrated over death, and the hope he offered in knowing the way to paradise. I felt certain that the professor would have entered my le ended my lecture and have me thrown out of the country that I was visiting. Instead, I was allowed to continue with the lecture I was giving and answer all of the questions that the students had to ask me. Amazingly, after the lecture, the professor asked me for 100 Bibles. There comes a time in ministry when you need to be bold. And like John the Baptist, say what the Spirit of God is leading you to say. And when you do, God will back you up. I shared this story because I know that God is preparing people listening to this message to stand up before a crowd of people and to say with a loud voice, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. After John the Baptist's announcement, Jesus stepped into the water and was baptized. He who was without sin asked to be baptized to show us the way to the Father's favor and the Father's power. In Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 1 and verse 10, we read, As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove. At that very moment, prophecy from the mouth of Isaiah was being fulfilled. Many years ago, Isaiah had cried out, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, and the mountains might quake at your presence, Isaiah 64 and verse 1. The heavens were opened that day for the Spirit of God to come upon Jesus. We live under an open heaven. We can talk to God because at that moment he opened the way for us to do so. Notice that the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon Jesus. 
you might ask the question, why does it say upon Jesus and not in Jesus? This is because Jesus already had the Spirit of God in him. The Bible and the Quran are very clear that Jesus was conceived by the breath of God. At no time did Jesus not have the Spirit of God in him. But on this day, the day that Jesus began his public ministry, he needed the Spirit of God not just in him, but upon him. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit in you. But if you want to do something significant for the kingdom of God, you're going to need the Holy Spirit upon you. He is in you for you, but he is upon you for others. He is in you for presence and for guidance and for comfort, but he is upon you to release power. It is the anointing that we carry that changes the lives of people whom we encounter. Notice further that after the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, God himself spoke in the hearing of all who were gathered at the Jordan River. After the dove descended upon Jesus, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. It was not Christians who called Jesus the Son of God. It was not the apostles who called Jesus the Son of God. It was not Mary who called Jesus the Son of God. It was not the shepherds who called Jesus the Son of God. It was Gabriel who said to Mary, it was Gabriel who said to the shepherds, this is the Son of the Most High, Jesus is the Son of God. And it was not John the Baptist who said, Jesus is the Son of God. It was the voice of God himself. I open your eyes to see that God himself called Jesus his beloved son. If God called him his son, why are you afraid to call him the son of God? I break off the fear on followers of Jesus listening to me right now to call Jesus the son of God. If you've never accepted the true identity of Jesus, I lift the veil off your eyes to see who Jesus is. Cry out to him saying, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me today and save my soul. If you will do that, he will save you at this very moment. Cry out with me, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me today and save my soul. Would you notice what else God said about Jesus? After he said, this is my beloved son, he said, with whom I am well pleased, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17 God was and is pleased with his son. I never really understood the significance of these words from Jesus. Uh, then one day a prophetess laid her hand on my shoulder and said, You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Tension inside of me was broken. We all strive to be pleased uh, to please someone. Most people want their father's approval. And this is what I understood on that day. If Jesus needed to hear words of how much, if Jesus needed to hear these words, how much more do you and I need to hear them? I am certain that someone listening today needs to hear these words. You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. If that is you, hear these words. He is pleased with you. God is pleased with you. He values you more than anything you could ever do for him. He had valued on this day his son before he began his ministry. He was simply saying, Jesus, my blessing and approval is upon your life. I want to say to you today, you have a heavenly father who approves of you. You don't have to prove anything to anyone because his love is upon you. His blessing is upon you. He cares so very much for you. I'm asking God to open your eyes as we just talk to him for a few moments to understand your identity. You are a beloved son. You are a beloved daughter of the Father. You have the Father's favor upon you, not because of what you do, but because of who you are. Come, Holy Spirit, fall upon people listening to this message 
Fill empty hearts with that sense of heaven's approval. And not just upon you, but to flow out from over you and to be upon you. I anoint you to carry the message of redemption through the Lamb of God. I anoint you to declare boldly that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I launch you into your destiny to prepare the way for Jesus to come into the lives of people that you meet. I commission you to release the power of the Holy Spirit that is upon you. Come, Holy Spirit, fall upon people who are listening to this message today. We trust that God will help you and encourage you and that you will find yourself in this powerful story of Jesus' baptism as I have, and God will encourage you today. Next week, we'll continue on the life Jesus modeled by studying the temptations of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.